Protest is an important activity for any free and moral society, but unfortunately there is a class of people in any society that seeks to utilize something that should be used for good purposes for patent evil. I think that we see this when we look at the incidences that have happened recently across the United States of left-wing activist protesters shutting down major organs of transportation, for example, shutting down the Golden Gate Bridge. or preventing everyday travelers and tourists from exiting or entering Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. You know traffic's bad when people are literally sitting on top of their cars and walking to the airport. <laughs> So on and so forth. We've seen this pattern of behavior, not just coming from the activist class that represent one cause. In the case of the two I just showed you, they represent the pro-Palestinian cause, but we've also seen this kind of behavior coming from groups like Extinction Rebellion in the United Kingdom or Just Stop Oil, who have employed rather grotesque methods to demonstrate their worldview, even if that means in their world view, in that in their in their perspective, making it hard for someone who's has a medical emergency to be delivered to the hospital. Someone saying, Keep that to yourself, love. In all of these cases, we see something that actually needs to be addressed. And I think contrasted between the other kinds of protests that do fulfill the proper form of protest and actually make the society better. In a society, my friends, where mere opinion and sanctimony usurp reason as the standard for all of us, there can be no way to conduct your behavior, or rather, the ways to conduct your behavior in a rational manner become a limited, limited, limited. Consider the fact that protest takes place in a social context. And social context, societies, you meeting someone, talking to them, whatever you have, whatever form it takes, require ethics in order to exist. In the absence of sound ethics and morality, social context tend to chaos. So a protest exists within the social context, and it is meant to fulfill the norms that govern that social context. But the moment those norms are rebelled against, you no longer have a form of protest that respects society that it's in. You rather have a form of protest that goes against the very foundations of that society and actually leads it towards a sort of chaotic end. In a society where activism, rather than rationalism and thinking, are emphasized as virtues, then you will receive antisocial behavior in as many ways as possible, and those people doing those behaviors will believe they are stunning and brave because the society around them has convinced them of this delusion. The behavior that these protesters do then triggers normal, average, everyday people to get angry and to think things that also attack that social context I was talking about earlier. When a normal, average, everyday person that is going to work or is trying to get home after a long day of work sees a bunch of 20-somethings on a line in front of a bridge blocking their transportation, a lot of people in their hearts want to commit some kind of act of violence. I've even seen comments on social media saying that those protesters should be thrown off the bridge or they should be ran over. And this sentiment is not uncommon. This will either be a private sentiment held in the hearts of people or it'll be a sentiment that is expressed in the form of actual violence as this old man did to these cadre of environmentalist protesters who were blocking him from getting home. He shot him point blank. And by the way, even though that, that environmentalist he was arguing with was doing something that was wrong, no one deserves to lose their life because they do stupid mistakes. Grace and redemption, goodwill and charity, those two principles are essential to ensuring that any society can persist. Because without goodwill, and without charity, enmity, chaos, conflict becomes the dominant norm of society, and then that makes everything else fall apart. So both the actions of the protesters and the reactions of people, all of them cause society to retrograde, to regress rather, into a state of chaos, which ultimately harms 
every single one of us in the long run. And who benefits from this regression of society from the norms of goodwill and charity? Those who seek to sow division. You may call them the elites. You may call them uh, politicians that have a, a, a particular bone to pick. You may call them the activist class that wants to sow division as a means of obtaining their socialist utopia. Whatever you call them, my friends, they benefit by the destruction of the cradle of human progress, which is civilization. Now, we should be mindful of all this as the cultural vanguard marches along and does these kind of sort of protest. We should also be mindful, however, of the right way to demonstrate your dissent against the government, because it is the birthright of any moral civilization to recognize the basic animating principle of the human being, which is conscience. And if your conscience, which is what should be informed by reason, motivates you to speak out against an injustice, then you are obligated to do so. And the farmers in Europe, especially the farmers in Brussels, Belgium, have actually shown a way to do this in a way that respects the society they are in and directs their ire, their anger, towards the actual culprit. See, the distinction between the farmers protesting in Europe who are protesting against the EU attempting to centrally plan their economies from on high and then by consequence limit the ability of the farmers to be able to actually do their job by importing goods from other countries and not only that but putting more regulations on the backs of the farmers to hurt them in the production of their crops which ultimately hurts the agricultural economy. So that's been the cause of the protest over in Europe. Farmers have been particularly protesting government buildings. They've been spraying manure on police trucks. They've been doing a bunch of different things, throwing beets, throwing hay. But they're not doing it towards average people. Now, some may say, well, Christian, there are some people on those European farm protests that have been violent. And that is the case. But there's also the case that there, whenever a movement rises up, agent provocateurs will take over and they will try to diminish the movement by doing things that are bad in association with the movement. Anyone who is a objective observer of these things will have to admit that the farmers' protest in Europe, across Europe, and all these different countries have a distinctively different character and a distinctively different aim than the crazy protests we've seen from Just Stop Oil, from the pro-Palestinians, from BLM, and all these other groups who direct their anger towards normal, average, everyday people who are actually under the same threat that they believe that they're under, which is so weird. Whereas the farmers direct their anger towards those who are actively harming them and those who are enforcing the harm in the form of trying to regulate them out of existence. It may be in a crude way, but it is in a necessary way, and it is in a good way. That form of protest, my friends, keeps the social context intact. That kind of protest, my friends, keeps the principles of goodwill and charity, which are essential to society, intact. And that kind of protest is actually far more effective because we've seen empirically that the farmers in Europe have gotten a lot of concessions from the powers that be in terms of the regulations and the situation going on around their being able to practice their, their, their tradecraft. Some of you may argue that the farmers in Europe are simply being appeased by temporary short-term measures that are not actually going to permanently fix the problem. But here is the point. The point is this, the fact that they're getting a concession in the first place demonstrates something about the quality of their protest, regardless of the permanence of those concessions. The fact that they are even getting these bureaucrats who quite literally locked down almost all of Europe and almost all of the West during the pandemic in the name of public safety, the fact that these people are even getting any concessions is absolutely amazing and it's, and it's indicative of a kind of way to conduct yourself in civil society that not only bears fruit, but it speaks kindly to your sensibility about your fellow man. My friends, those who would seek to disrupt our societies in the name of doing good, those who would seek to harm you or I as we go throughout our everyday lives in the name of social justice, those who would seek to impede goodwill and charity, by calling everyone else who disagrees with them bad people and seeking to shut them down, censor them, or in certain cases even harm them. Those people are anti-social. In the American context, they are anti-American. And they stand against everything our republic was constituted to be. And those people must be dealt with in a peaceful way 
but in a way that ensures they can no longer harm the society that they are in. The laws must be enforced to ensure the social context can persevere. But for those of us who genuinely do have that righteous fire of conscience within us, and we genuinely do seek to correct authority in a manner that redresses grievances and also keeps all of us in our own personal rights free and unimpeded, then we have to begin to look at our own tactics and to exemplify the, the sort of, I would say, sociability principle that all of us as human beings are in this civilization together because we have a sense, a social sense that drives us into civilization, that drives us into cooperation. And we have to use that spirit as the farmers have in Europe to beat back tyranny and to redress injustice. That's how we do it. But I'll say this as well, and I'll close on this. A philosophy that says that the society you live in is inherently oppressive because it has norms and standards, which are philosophies that many people that are on the environmentalist left and also that are on the pro-Palestinian left tend to have due to the paradigms many of them espouse and many of their thought leaders espouse when they discuss these issues in public. A philosophy that says those things can have no respect for society. We should not simply see their behavior as an outgrowth of youthful immaturity or ignorance, although it may have some interaction with those two concepts. We should instead see the behavior of these people as exactly what it is, a result of a regressive, antisocial, anti-human, power politics created philosophies that mean and that mean to do nothing more than elevate one group of people over the rest of us and enslave us to a kind of serfdom in the name of achieving some greater good. When the good becomes weaponized against average people, then we have to really ask ourselves and get back to basics. What is good? And how can we truly pursue the good while maintaining the society we live in? My friends, if you like this video, like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you can. Let's get this message out there. If you want to support me and you enjoy philosophical commentary on social and political issues, then you can also donate to me if you want to. I can, my comment is down there and in the comment section, and there we'll have plenty of resources to donate to. If you also want to support me in general, you can join my Discord, which is also in the comment section down below. My friends, study history, study philosophy, remain morally convicted, and please stay pensive. Bye, guys.